Aloha, everybody, and welcome to the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. I'm your host, Drew Manning. And I am your co-host, Lynn Manning. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Today, we have an awesome episode ahead of us. We are interviewing the executive producer of the TV show, Extreme Weight Loss. Now, we had Chris and Heidi Powell on a few weeks ago, who are the hosts of the show. We want to have the executive producer, Matt, on uh, to kind of talk about the behind-the-scenes stuff that no one really sees that goes on with the show and how that applies to health and fitness and you, the listener who's who's listening to this. Before we get into that, today's episode is brought to you guys by Quest Nutrition. You guys know that we love Quest. They have the most amazing protein bars on the market. The taste is amazing. The macros are great. The high quality ingredients that we love in them. But also on top of that, you guys, they have protein chips. We love um, the protein powder as well is very very tasty oh man their chips those the salted vinegar that yeah one sea is, salt and vinegar man that one's my uh, favorite i like sour cream and onion uh, our kids love them that's yeah, the cool thing our kids, kids, really with the our kids don't really know the difference between those and, and like real chips. lays potato chips i know we're kind of which is crazy the like that the but chips we give them <laughs> yep yeah, and the protein powder is great too you guys mixes really well you guys it's know i for love baking too their protein powder yep. that's what i use and you guys know that i love my spinach shake and uh, all of their flavors taste great with a spinach shake, uh, even their peanut butter flavor, which is awesome. It goes perfectly with that. So check them out, questnutrition.com, and let's go hang out with Matt. All right, uh, Matt Osmus, thank you so much for joining us today on our podcast. It's a pleasure to have you. You bet. You bet. Yeah. Now, really quick, do you I have to ask this? Your last name is pronounced Osmus, not Ass. Most right. It is. It's pronounced <laughs> awesome. Oh my yeah. gosh! I, you know, I get, I'm what sure you get we, that like all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, there, there were plenty of uh, plenty of jokes. So, um, hey, I get but it. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's awesome. It's actually it's German. In the, in Germ in German, uh, there's actually a different letter. It looks like a like a uppercase B with like a long stem on it, which is sort of a long S sound, is my understanding. And so it was okay. like A, then that letter, and then M U S in German. When they came to America, they just translated. It to A S S M U S. So, so anyways, I, <laughs> no, yeah, I, I just, and, and my uh, <laughs> grandfather and father and myself have been blessed ever since. My son, uh, <laughs> I thought about changing it, but my dad always said it built character. Yeah, there you go, yeah. man. No, I love it, dude. And and it's kind of funny, but uh, you know, I just I, I figured I'd throw that out there. But really quick, let me just introduce Matt to you guys. A lot of you are wondering, like, who's Matt Osmus? You know, we've had Chris and Heidi Powell on the show some big names. Matt is the guy you don't really see on camera. He's the guy behind the camera. Uh, he's been the executive producer for a lot of TV shows. I'm going to go through this list here, Matt, and so feel free to talk about any of them. But obviously, most people know you most recently for your, your role in Extreme Weight Loss with Chris and Heidi Powell. Uh, before that was the OCD Project, Hammer Time, The Biggest Loser even, yeah. right, on yep. NBC. Did The Biggest Loser for a couple yep. seasons. Beauty, Beauty and the Geek, which actually I don't remember if I watched it, but I remember what that was about. Wasn't that setting up some like beautiful model with some kind of like nerdy? Yeah, yeah, guys, was, uh, right? Eight uh, <laughs> geeky guys and eight beautiful girls in a house together, and they would team up into into pairs of two. And every week, the girls would have to do like a challenge with computers, and the guys would have to <laughs> oh like the guys would have to like model uh, on a runway. So. <laughs> yeah, it was it was fun. That was a funny show, and you know, kind of brought two people from very different worlds together. That's funny, man. I know it's crazy what what kind of shows are out there. You also were on Pimp My Ride, two thousand four. Oh my gosh, I was, are these yeah. really shows? Well, you were part of that, and these then really Fear shows. Factor, even. Yep. Where you, this is like back in the day, two thousand three, right? Was- yeah. And then this one I found interesting, Playboy. Who wants to be a Playboy <laughs> centerfold? <laughs> oh my that that gosh. showed up on IMDb, oh which is gosh. you know. Yeah, I, think that's, uh, I, I was like on that for like one day, so that was that was a that was a, that was a I was a PA on that. That was a that was a that was a um, awakening to uh, Hollywood All for right. sure. I was in Hollywood for probably six months, and I got the call to go do that. So, anyways, this is like a PG show, people. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm sure it's totally that, PG. Okay. Um, it was too. That was for Fox. It was a. a it was a, a bunch of girls trying out to be be uh, to model for Playboy, but. Yeah, uh, oh that's funny. It was a, it was well, a, it was a trip, man. So I was just gonna say, when you're a production assistant, though, you you don't get to pick and choose. They tell you, hey, you go here and do this show. Yeah, right? yeah. I was just, I was not. I mean, it, it sounds really exciting, and b- what I was really doing was uh, just like transporting tapes back and forth. So, um, 
But yeah, I think that it is, is it's one of the few shows that actually ends up on my IMDb because IMDb, if you don't manage your IMDb account, like it's just, oh. just kind of whatever credits um, other people put on there. Go on okay, it. gotcha. So, um, so yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Well, um, kind of before we get started, I wanted to kind of preemphasize this this interview. A lot of people might be thinking, why are we having an executive producer of reality television shows on our podcast? And that is an interesting question. But the truth is, is Drew and I have talked a lot about these shows. Of course, he's been on Extreme Weight Loss. We've had Kristen Heidi on, like you said. Um, we've actually met people from The Biggest Loser. Because we're in the industry, we know so many former contestants that have been on that show. And because we're trainers, we actually get asked about those shows or the people's results or why didn't I lose as much weight as somebody did on a television show all the time. I personally think that, you know, The Biggest Loser and Extreme Weight Loss, these weight loss reality shows have really changed the industry. And we wanted to kind of focus on, you know, they've changed it for the good and they've kind of also maybe changed it for the bad. Um, of, of course, for the good, they've really inspired people. I specifically like how on Extreme Weight Loss, they really showcase a person's entire journey. You know, the emotional, the mental, you know, how they got there, the food addiction. They're showing all of it, which I think really resonates with people, showing a different side to not just, you know, hey, let's eat right and exercise, showing the emotional side. Um, on the negative side, I mean, I've heard people say things like, well, I watched The Biggest Loser and in a week they lost 20 pounds and I only lost two, mm -hmm. you yeah, know, and true. so, it, yeah, it can create, you know, unrealistic expectations and that's why we were really excited to have Matt on the show with us. Yeah, we feel like you can give a different perspective, uh, someone that's on the inside that kind of, you know, you're, you're the kind of the creator of the show. You put these stories together and you pick people for the show and things like that. And we kind of want to give people an inside scoop of what it looks like behind the scenes. Um, and, and mostly today we are going to be talking about extreme weight loss. Uh, we're not talking about, you know, uh, Fear Factor, or the Playboy <laughs> one, <laughs> those shows. I we're am focusing. Have us talk a little bit about the biggest <laughs> Loser too. Yeah, I, we will talk I, about the biggest loser. I feel that's you, a very have, different dynamic, extreme weight loss versus the biggest loser. My personal opinions on that too. Yeah, and just just so people know, like how we met Matt was he actually reached out to me um, after I did my Fit to Fat to Fit journey and invited me on on the show uh, during season three as a guest trainer, and that's where I met him and and became friends with Chris and Heidi and, and saw what happened behind the scenes of the TV show. So Matt, uh, the first question is, can you talk to us a little bit about how extreme weight loss came to be? Sure. Like we heard it from Chris's perspective. Um, I kind of want to hear how you were involved with it and how it came to be as a, such a successful TV show. Yeah, well, I was lucky enough to work for a company called Three Ball Productions, who was run by uh, J.D. Roth and Todd Nelson. And they created The Biggest Loser and Extreme Weight Loss. Um, and I think Extreme Weight Loss kind of came from looking at The Biggest Loser and, and realizing that sort of the one fault with the show was that you have to wait 13 to 15 weeks to see the final transformation. Um, and I think they had kicked around for a long time sort of the idea of, you know, we're following 13 people for six months or nine months or however long a season of The Biggest Loser is. Um, you know, what if we were to take each of those people, make each of those people their own episode? Um, so they had started developing that. Meanwhile, Chris's uh, documentary, The 640-Pound Virgin, which was on TLC and was at the time the highest rated documentary ever on TLC, um, had come out. And we saw this good-looking, you know, blonde trainer who'd helped a guy lose, you know, six, uh, you go from 640 pounds to 240 pounds in a little over a year. Um, and I think they they approached him and said, you know, do you want to be a part of this? And they brought Chris on board. And then when they got me involved, they kind of looked at me and said, you know, um, as a, you know, from a production standpoint, how could we make this happen? Like most reality shows, uh, are filmed in three to six months. You know, this would be from the beginning of pre-production to the end of the edit. It would be, you know, a year plus, you know, however many months it took to prep it and however many months it took to edit it. So um, that's when I sat down with uh, JD and we kind of came up with this idea of the four phases. So if you watch Extreme Weight Loss, you know, everything's kind of divided into four phases. Um, and that originally was a construct of the TV show. It wasn't really a weight loss concept. Um, 
But Chris was smart enough to sort of find a way to say, all right, if I know that we're going to be filming with these people every 90 days, what expectations can we have for these people in 90 days? Um, if they're truly super obese and they're, you know, uh, double their ideal body weight, we can assume that they have 50% of their weight to lose. Um, and doctors, we, I mean, we consulted with all kinds of doctors, and, and, and sort of the resounding answer is that the most anyone can really lose in a given week is 2% of their current body weight. So as we started to do the math and we looked, if someone loses 2% of their original body weight every week, you know, for X amount of time, they can lose about 25% of their body weight in the first 90 days, 15% in the second 90 days, and 10% in the third 90 days, and, and be at their goal. And if they hit all three of those goals, then in the fourth phase, the fourth th uh, set of three months, they can do the skin surgery, which takes about three months to um, recover from. So in an ideal world, that's what we wanted out of the year-long process. Um, and, you know, we presented that to uh, ABC and we, you know, got cracking on the first uh, season. So um, that's kind of how extreme weight loss came to be. That's interesting. I was wondering how they picked the numbers. Like every time when they're like, this is going to be what your goal is. I'm like, I wonder why. See, now I know it's actually like strategic. There's a formula There's involved, a formula right? Involved. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's, yeah. So 2% of your original body weight per week. And that's given that you're super obese. So if you're only yeah. 20 pounds overweight, don't expect that you're going to lose, <laughs> you know, 2% of your body weight in a given week. Uh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I mean, that goes back to your unreasonable expectations. I, I think yes. people do get unreasonable expectations, um, uh, you know, watching the show because most people aren't 200 pounds overweight. You know, if yeah. you are 200 pounds overweight, you can lose, you know, 10 to 15 pounds in your very first week. Um, you know, because there's a, I mean, as you know, Drew and, and, and yeah. you guys are experts in this, a lot of it, you know, is water. Um, yeah. but that's yeah. why, yeah. you know, in, on Biggest Loser, there would always be sort of, they'd call it like the week two curse, you know, where in, in week two, um, every season I did of, of Biggest Loser, that was always the big story in the second episode was that people would have these terrible numbers in the second week. And it's because they went so hard in the first. Yeah, week. very interesting. I thought um, one of the things that you, you were talking about, I kind of want to ask uh, extreme weight loss versus Biggest Loser is I like that extreme weight loss does the skin surgery at the end, right? Because by the end, if you're losing 50% 50, 50 of your body weight, you know, people ask me all the time, how do you, you know, tighten up loose skin? Well, for those people that are, you know, super obese and they lose half their body weight, skin surgery is pretty much the only option, right? Yeah. If they want to get rid yeah. of that. I think that's really cool you guys do that. Do you know why Biggest Loser does not do that a, at the end or do they offer that? It's a fairness issue uh, because there's a $250,000 prize. Um, you know, skin surgery affects everyone differently. So yes. everyone on Biggest Loser does their skin surgery after the uh, after the winner has been announced. So yeah, um, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, because the people in, at the end of Extreme Weight Loss aren't winning a cash prize at the no, end. No, right? no, they just get their lives back, and you know sometimes there will be a <laughs> bonus gift from Walmart or something like that. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean I, the the idea of of Extreme Weight Loss, you know, in addition to following one person every episode, was always that it would be more of a real world transformation. You know, it would be people in their homes um, and doing it mostly on their own, like Chris. You know, uh, for a while was moving in um, for the first 90 days. Then, you know, um, then, you know, as he got stretched thinner and thinner and we were doing more and more episodes per year, we ended up doing, you know, a three month boot camp just because it was the only way to get Chris any real FaceTime with the people. Um, but still, nine months of their transformation is done at home. At home, yeah. And that's what I like about the formula of extreme weight loss. It is more realistic, in my opinion, where they're not on this camp where their meals are, you know, are being cooked for them or, you know, they're, they're working out. they're working out, out seven hours a day. Seven hours a day. They still have to go to work. They have to get their kids to school. They have their normal lives, right? And that's what I like about extreme weight loss is it seems to be more realistic in that sense. And I think that's why people can relate to it better is because they're like, hey, these people are at home. Doing it. Have the same schedule as I have. And they're, they're able to do it. I mean, obviously. Do you guys give them any sort of guidance, though? Like you need to work out X amount of hours a day or 
Do you guys give them a specific oh, guidance for extreme weight I loss? I don't. I'm a, I mean, I'm a TV producer, but Chris and Heidi are, yeah. are very involved and have a very, very strict plan and a very individualized plan for each person. Like they really are, uh, um, you know, the real deal. I mean, they, they don't just show up uh, for camera. They, you know, are on the phone with these people all hours of the night when they had a bad weigh-in, um, you know, trying to dissect, you know, if they've eaten too many carbs or not drank enough water or, you know, it's um, – it's it's troubleshooting. So I was working with Bruce Pitcher just very briefly, right, when he was uh, after his first 90 days and seeing how involved Chris and Heidi were, like Heidi was texting me every day like because we were training for a little bit and then he had a concussion issue and so she was like checking in every single day. I'm like, wow, you know, she has so much going on in her life but she's still so invested in each of the, the people's, you know, success. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think that's really – like you said, they have a great track track record because of that. Um, the next question, Matt, is uh, people ask me this all the time: like, how how do I get on the show? Like, can you help me? I'm like, look, I have, I have no connections. But <laughs> I know people are like, can you guys hook me up with that? We're like, I thought, like, yeah. can you reach out to Chris and have him pick me? I'm like, that, I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> I don't think Chris and Heidi necessarily pick the people. Yeah, but can maybe you, you kind of touch out. on the process that uh, these clients have to go through to actually be picked for the TV show? Yeah, um, I mean, Chris and Heidi do have a very uh, uh, big role in, in picking the people. Um, and, you know, I wish we could pick everybody that applies. Um, a lot of people, I find, think they need the show and they really don't. Again, it's the people who are, you know, 20 to 50 pounds overweight. Like, we're really looking for the people that are sort of at their last resort. And, um, you know, I think the best advice I, I've given people in the past who've sent in uh, an audition tape or gone to a, an open casting call is, um, you know, you have to sort of brand yourself. You have to set yourself apart. You know, are you the um, gay firefighter or are you, um, you know, the woman who lost, just lost her child or, you know, th there's, there's, um, Unfortunately, we are making a TV show, and and, yeah. and every TV show um, right now is two hours long, and you have to sort of be able to hold two hours, um, you know, with your story. And then beyond that, you know, we do quite a casting process. Um, you know, as compared to Biggest Loser, that was you know a couple days of in-person interviews for the finalists. Um, we do an almost two-week-long casting process. Um, for the finalists on extreme weight loss, um, because once they're on the show, you know they're with us for a year. Um, it's not like if the person becomes difficult or they decide they don't want to lose weight anymore, they just get eliminated. Um, they they are in it, you know, and and we have to make sure. It's almost I when I talk, I've talked to the cast, I've com compared it to the NFL Combine. You know, it's like you're, you're, you're about to give somebody a million dollar contract and you're, ex you're expecting them to perform for your team. And so you're not just going to spend, you know, one day interviewing them and then make, make your decisions. So, you know, it's, we have people out and we, um, actually watch them in workouts and we, you know, um, you know, watch to see what they're eating as they're going in and out of the hotel. And we, you know, uh, have them do psych tests and, um, behavioral profiles and, and things like that. So, and, and as this series went on, I feel like we got better and better at really picking the people um, who were ready to do it and ready to do it, you know, whether they got picked for the show or not. So that, that, that was always kind of a key. And then, you know, of course, Chris and Heidi um, have to, um, you know, want the person to. So it's, it usually comes down to, you know, the people they want in the end. Interesting. So they, so that's what I was going to ask is how, how are they involved with the process? Like they are given the 50, um, profiles like on, on you know, a, a document or like that with pictures mm -hmm. or do they get to meet them in person and say, yes, this person, no, that person, how are they, what's the process? Yeah, for they, them? They'll actually meet the people. Um, and you know, get to know them and see who they have connections with and, um, and, uh, yeah, um, they, you know, will definitely weigh in after they've, they've met the people. So, so, um, one of my favorite things that you guys did on the show was bringing on Heidi mm -hmm. as a trainer. Sure. And I wanted to ask you guys, what made you guys decide to bring her on and become part of the show? It was hard not to. I mean, she was so involved, like, like Drew said, I mean, she often was the one making the calls to the people that, you know, weren't on camera, you know, I mean, Chris was so busy filming the show, um, that, 
you know, he'd get home and he'd be on the phone till, you know, one or two o'clock in the morning trying to handle phone calls. So um, Heidi, you know, I think halfway through the first season started, you know, handling a lot of the troubleshooting phone calls and um, got to the point where it was she was just too involved not to acknowledge her on camera. Um, mm, and she had, she that. had such a, such a relationship with these people, um, that, uh, that, you know, we wanted her to be on camera with a lot of these people cause she, she knew stuff that maybe Chris didn't even know, or she had a relationship that, that Chris didn't even have. And, um, ultimately from a production standpoint, it started to make things easier to have two people as well, because I could be, um, you know, sending one crew to, to Milwaukee and one crew to Hawaii, uh, and, you know, having two trainers um, helped sort of split the uh, the burden of shooting it. Yeah, and it, it's completely true that, you know, at least for me, even watching the show, men, men and women are different. Men and, men and women trainers are different. And the type of connection or the dynamic is going to be different, you know, Heidi versus Chris. And it's great to kind of see that because one may really connect with the client and the other trainer might not versus, you know, and then vice versa. You know, I've seen Heidi with these women, especially on the show where she kind of opened up about her eating disorder and they really bonded over that. And it just made me think, you know, this woman's going to make more improvements and do better because she has Heidi there that's been through the same situation and that can really connect with her on that level. Yep. And as a team, it's like they both play different roles too. You know, Chris can be the nice guy often and Heidi can sort of be the tough love. Um, so, you know, they're great together. <laughs> and, um, and it's not like we, su- we suddenly put them together. They were always working together. You just never got to really see it on camera in the first few seasons. So Yeah, yeah no, and I kind of want to bring that up because I did talk to Chris a lot about, like, you know, how it was for him because I was so surprised at how similar we were where he is more of the nice guy. He's not your Jillian Michaels type of trainer. Um, do you feel like you've had to push him in some situations to be like, hey, Chris, man, you got to toughen up or you got to, you know, <laughs> cuss a little or, or something like that. <laughs> Cause like, um, it's like, dude, you're too nice. Like, do you ever feel like you've had to do that with him? Cause yeah, I could kind of yeah, see I'd that. I'd be lying if, if I yeah. said I didn't have, I didn't have to pull him aside once in a while and say, <laughs> Chris, are you really buying this? You know, Heidi will be the first one to tell you that Chris will buy everybody's story. Like he wants so badly to believe in everybody. So in the days before Heidi was a part of the show, yeah, I would say I had to step in more and say, Chris, you know, do you really believe that this guy put on, you know, put on 10 pounds because he was not eating enough calories? Like, you know, that's, that's just not possible. And, you know, Chris wants to try and argue in his head the, the science of how that could possibly happen when, you know, the yeah. odds of that actually happening are just so minuscule. Um, and then I love Heidi probably swooped in and was like, okay, let's be yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Heidi, <laughs> quit the Once on Heidi, Heidi was on board, I didn't really have to step in that much because she was, yeah, she didn't, she didn't buy uh, those stories. So, I love it. <laughs> that's funny. No, and that's cool. Yeah, you know, everybody loves Chris, but that's what people like about him is because he, what you see on camera is kind of how he is in real life. You know, he's really down to earth, easygoing guy. He'll talk to you for hours. I remember him telling me like, "Hey, you know, sometimes Heidi or, or Matt have to pull me away from people because like I'll talk to them for hours, wherein you guys are trying to keep them on schedule." Mm-hmm. For example. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As the show got more and more popular, it was harder and harder to like shoot in you know really public places because he would get pulled and he would never say no to a picture. He would never say no to an autograph, and you know we'd be an hour behind and I you know be having to pull him away from people. Gotcha. So <laughs> I think that's awesome. Um, another question I kind of want to ask you, Matt, is and this is kind of tough because you are making a TV show and there, you know, you do want uh, ratings and you want the TV show to be successful. And a part of that is getting these clients to meet their goals. And so do you feel like who's the one that has to put pressure on the clients to be like, Hey, you, you have to meet this goal or else there's a consequence or else this is going to happen. Like at their 90 day or, yeah. or a six month challenge, how much pressure is put on the clients to reach their goals? Well, I think that, um, they have a lot of pressure on them just naturally. I think, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, why, why are these people so successful? You know, cause in, in the real world, weight loss programs have like a 10 to 20% success rate. Um, whereas, you know, I think in doing 55 episodes now of the show, we've really only had two episodes where people have either quit or just been, you know, a complete disaster. Like we've had a few people who've, you know, come to their final way in and they're, you know, maybe 30 pounds away from where they wanted to get to, but they still lost 180. So, um, you know, what is it that makes 
people able to lose that amount of weight? And I, I think it's accountability. You know, on, on Biggest Loser, it's the accountability of, 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 of an elimination every week. On our show, it's just flat out the accountability of having to stand on that final weigh-in stage and show your weigh-in. You know, and, and those cameras on you, you know, the cameras is really the greatest I don't want to call it a weapon, but it's it's the greatest form of accountability. Um, and so, I you know we we have producers who are assigned to each person, um, and my producers will occasionally get on people's case for you know being far off their goals. But honestly, as a as a producer, like I'm fine with people missing their goals because there's a story behind that, you know. And what is the story behind that? And you know, not hitting your goals—that's a part of life, and that's you know something that people at home are going to be able to relate to. The challenge is always to get people to admit really what they did, because yeah. um, people always want to you know either say they didn't do anything wrong or they were doing everything too right. That's what we'll get more often than not. It's like, oh, I was just working out too hard, and so I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm swelling, or I wasn't, you know, I wasn't eating I'm swelling. enough. Yeah, I, I wasn't that. eating enough calories, and that's why my body's holding on to this weight. And, well, scientifically, you c- you can maybe gain a little weight from swelling, or you can, you know, um, not lose weight because you're starving yourself um, in in a you know a 90 day period you're you're that's you're not going to lose weight or you're not going to gain weight so um so that that was always the challenge and the really you know we always wanted the best for these people we wanted these people uh you know every episode we wanted them to look like heroes because you know if they're heroes that inspires people at home to be heroes that themselves yeah Yeah. and i kind of want to touch on that is the accountability because this is one thing i preach to people is, is to be accountable and they think well if i had cameras on me all the time and if i was on tv then i would lose the weight but they feel like oh well i don't have that so you know i'm, I'm never going to be able to lose weight but the, the truth is is the opposite of that you can be accountable to other people you don't need it to be on a tv show to lose the weight mm-hmm. uh one person that comes to mind is josh Steele, right who wasn't picked for the show but ended up losing a ton of weight um, even though he he wasn't he didn't get picked for the show, and it's one thing we preach to people is you have to be accountable to somebody else. Uh, no matter who you are, you're going to lose motivation along the way, and it's going to be a struggle. But if you can find someone to be accountable to and have a support system, that's what's going to help you um, maintain a healthy lifestyle over time. And we're going to talk about this um, in a little bit, um, talking about after the show. But really brief, really quickly, I want to ask you on the show the the clients obviously chris isn't there every single day to work them out they are assigned a, a local trainer right yep. can we talk about yeah, that they, they they usually have a local trainer um that chris has handpicked or or heidi has handpicked and um you know one thing you don't also don't see on the show is that the the group of people who make up a season of the show um they all get to be friends because they all come out for boot camp together and they all come out for their 9 month weigh-ins and their skin surgeries together and they develop a really tight bond and as much as uh, each person wants to perform and hit their goals for Chris and Heidi they also want to hit their goals for the other cast members in the group um and, you know, they don't want to be the only person that doesn't hit their 90-day goal. It's like, you know, I think this past season we had two out of like the 15 people that we were following that didn't hit their 90-day goal. And that really stuck with those two people. They hated that they were, the, you know, that they saw 13 other people hit their 90-day goal and they didn't. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, to the people out there that are on their own, I would say find some form of accountability. You know, get into a, a weight loss group, you know, do a diet bet. Um, you know, tell somebody close to you what your weight loss goal is and set a specific date that you're going to be at that goal and tell them, you know, you want them to weigh you in. Like it, it, it is, uh, very important to have accountability because, um, you know, without it, 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 it's just you. And, um, you know, as Chris, I'm sure talked about one of his big things he preaches that the easiest person to let down is yourself. So, um, and that's, you know, what most people are in the habit of doing because you'll, you'll do everything you promise you'll do for everybody else, your wife and your kids and your, your coworkers and your boss. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you let yourself down, you're really only letting yourself down. And and that's fine with most people. Um, but that's the reason, you know, most people don't hit their goals. Yeah. I love that. I love that because like Drew's saying, we, we definitely, and I know for my clients that did the same thing, we definitely preach about accountability 
And we also talk about, you know, you should be your best friend, talking about that integrity. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't tell your best friend that they're too fat or they're not worth it or that they should skip a workout or that they can't, they can't eat healthy or that they shouldn't be a priority. Yet people often do that to themselves. So I do agree, like having a support system, having accountability, those ideas that you gave about a diet bed or, you know, getting a group together at work or having a friend weigh you in, those are all like really great tips. My question is, you know, these people have this accountability, you know, to the extreme because they have these group of friends, they have the cameras on them. And then a lot of times people go, you know, wonder what happens to them after they get off the show. You know, what are the, do you have statistics? Do you guys follow the stats of how many people after the show end up gaining the weight back? I I mean, I don't have statistics in front of me. Some do. Uh, I mean, that's the unfortunate uh, truth. Um, If I had to guess, I would say it's maybe, you know, a quarter of the people will gain some weight, some of the weight back. Um, I would say 50% keep it off. Um, And then there's a small percentage that'll put a lot of weight back on, unfortunately. Um, You know, our our hope always was with extreme weight loss that these people um, would develop new habits, being that it's on a year-long timeline. uh, You should be able to sort of change your behavior in that amount of time and that... um, that after a year, if you still, you know, were in your bad habits, then, you know, it, it was going to take more help than we could really give. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Have you noticed any type of kind of going along with that, though? Have you specifically noticed any any trend from keeping up with any maybe of the clients post of what they've done, the ones that stick it out mm-hmm. and maintain or maybe even improve what difference do you see in those people versus maybe the ones that seem to be gaining the weight back? I would say the biggest thing is that people who are successful keeping it off put themselves out in their public, wherever it is. And if they're in a, from a small town, it's their small town. If it's in a city, it's at their gym or you know, at their office. But they put themselves out as the, the guy or the girl from extreme weight loss. And, you know, they take speaking engagements and they mentor people at their local gym and they, you know, work at destination boot camp like Bruce and Bob are doing. You know, they intentionally, yeah. um, you know, whether it becomes a new career for them or not, um, you know, we had one of the couples in this past season who got married. They actually opened their own gym, you know, and now they're the you know, they're gym owners and they've got a bunch of people that come to their gym every day. And, you know, they have accountability to those people at their gym to keep their weight off because if they start putting their weight on and people see that they're going to the gym, you know, of the people who put all their weight back on, it, you know, ends up losing them business. So, um, and same with Bob and Bruce. They, you know, they get paid to do speaking engagements and get paid to help at destination boot camp. And, you know, even people who don't get paid will have, will be mentoring someone at their local gym and they don't want to let that person down by putting their weight back yeah. on. So I, I would say that's kind of the number one key I've seen in the people who've kept the weight off is they've, they've paid it forward. Um, and you know, we think of paying it forward as kind of helping someone else, but in actuality it's helping, you know, the, that, the person who's helping just as much as yeah i've kind of i've kind of noticed that observing people both from extreme weight loss and the biggest losers i start following them on social media and the ones that i've known to to keep the weight off and maintaining that weight loss are, are the ones that keep posting about hey i'm out the gym working out here's my lunch today um and they're out there in the public eye staying accountable to their followers because after being seen on tv they get a flood of people that like you know, reach out to them and say, you're my inspiration and they relate to them mm-hmm. and they look to them as, uh, as their Chris Powell, you know, like, like, Hey, what do we do? And so they're looking at them for direction and the ones that keep posting to their followers and, and maintain that social media brand that they've created. I've noticed those are the ones that keep the weight off versus the ones that after a while kind of go into hiding and stop posting as much. Those are the ones that tend to end up gaining the weight back. And that's just from my own observation sure. of following people on both Extreme Weight Loss and The Biggest Loser um, after they they uh, have their episode. Well, if you're um, from, say, Lovell, Wyoming, uh, it's a town of you know 200 people, and you go into the restaurant and you're the girl from Extreme Weight Loss – you know, it's, it's hard to be invisible in that scenario. Yeah. You know, everybody's going to come by and they're going to look and see what you're ordering and how much ketchup you're putting on it. And, <laughs> you know, that, that 
is a form of accountability. So, you yeah. know, continuing to be the person that they were when they were on the show, I think is the, is the biggest key to keeping the weight. What, um, is there anything like, what's the process after the show's complete? Do you, are you guys like, Hey, thanks. See you later. Or is there some kind of transition program where, um, I don't know where there, if there's some kind of, uh, yeah, like some kind of a uh, process that they follow after the show to kind of push them in the right direction. Yeah. I, um, there is not an official process of any kind, and often we're, okay. we're I mean, it, we're stretched thin as uh, you know, as producers and as you know, Chris and Heidi. I th- definitely keep in touch with the people, but you know, they've got a whole new group of thirteen people to to work with. You know, every year when we're shooting the final weigh-ins, we have usually just cast or are about to pick a whole new group of thirteen people. So. Uh, or 15 people or however many it ends up being in a, in a given season. So, um, so again, I go back to the, the fact that they've now been doing this healthy lifestyle for a year and the hope is that, um, they can continue it. Um, and yeah. they, they don't need like an official program cause they, they should know the program at that point and be able to do it on their own. And again, because they've been doing it on their own for nine months, um, Biggest Loser had, had, more, had more program in place for people when they went home um, because they were on a ranch, you know, for the whole time they were losing weight. So there was more of, you know, more need for a transitional program in that, uh, in that scenario. Yeah. No, I was just curious to see if there was. But it sounds like there's a lot of opportunities for people if they are willing to you know, seize those opportunities as far as, hey, I want to get certified as a trainer. I want to open up my gym. I want to start doing speaking engagements. I want to work with extreme weight loss at their destination boot camp. Or, like, I- I've hired several of our former success stories because if you've lost 200 pounds, you know, that, that's a huge, huge accomplishment. Like, all I do is produce a TV show. Like, you know, I, I yeah. bow down to you if you've lost 200 pounds. And, you know, that, that's impressive. And people are going to be impressed by it and they're going to want to know how you did it. And they're going to want to, you know, even if you're not speaking to a group of people looking to lose weight, you can be an inspirational speaker to a football team or to, you know, a group of coworkers or, you know, Bob and Bruce do speaking engagements all the time. Uh, and, you know, I, for everything from, you know, um, uh, fitness expositions to, you know, the National Dairy Council and, um, you know, the local high school and things like that. So um, yeah. Yeah, people want to hear a success story. Okay, one last question that I had, and it's kind of a personal one, but it, it's just interesting to me to see, like, the, the people behind the show, the, the production crew, they see these people go through these amazing transformations um, which I'm sure is inspiring to so many people. Do you ever feel like you become numb to it? Like, oh, you know, this is just another person. They're going to lose the weight. And do you feel like you've become numb to it? Or do you feel like every once in a while you still get inspired to be like, hey, I need to eat healthier. <laughs> you know, I need to work out more <laughs> like on a personal level. Yeah. How is that for you seeing these amazing transformations behind the scenes? And is it inspirational or do you become numb to it sometimes? I mean, I'm just lucky to be a part of it. You know, um, I went to a viewing party of a – someone who was on this season of the show recently and um they live in my hometown so it was one of the first times i've ever kind of gone to a viewing party and just looking around there's hundreds of people in this room watching the show and they're just all crying you know and they all come up to her afterwards and are telling her you know you've inspired me to reach back out to my mom and reach back out to my family and or you've inspired me to you know try and fix my marriage um and you know that's uh that's what it gets me excited. So sometimes, you know, even when I may not be um, thrilled with this person's particular story because it doesn't really speak to me as an individual, I know that there's going to be people out there who are watching and it's going to inspire them to do something better with their life. And so that never gets old. Um, does it inspire us to eat better? <laughs> I wish. Um, that's, that's kind of, that's it. Our, our production crew, I think it's... Uh, you know, the, one of the, I think the dark, the dark secrets of weight loss shows is that a lot of people um, will sit at home and watch the show and think, well, at least I'm not that fat. 
And so they'll yeah. sit and they'll eat a pint of ice cream while they're watching Extreme Weight Loss. If I, if I was to count up all the tweets and all the Facebook posts that we get, three out of four of the Facebook posts will be like, sitting here eating my Ben and Jerry's while I'm watching Extreme Weight Loss, you know? Um, and that, sadly, I think is, is one of the, the you, you talked about, Lynn, the negative effects of weight loss shows. Is I think that they almost serve to keep people out of the gym because they feel like, well, at least I'm better than that guy. And, I, and unfortunately, I think for our production crew, sometimes that same thing applies. We're like, well, you know, it's like, you know, at least we're not overweight like they are. So we'll, yeah. we'll eat yeah. healthy. And we, we get tired of seeing healthy food all, all day long and um, <laughs> work 12-hour days and um, a lot of you know, emotional stuff, uh, you know, when we're producing. So we're excited to get out for a nice dinner at the end of the night. But I don't blame you. We're not judging you here. Yeah, we're not judging we're you. Not. It's all good, man. Like, but no, I'm glad you're totally open up and being honest about that. You know, kind of my last, before we do our fun lightning round that you don't know about, but my um, <laughs> last question before that, you know, it's kind of a question, more of a statement, kind of wrapping it up the same way we started. You know, my biggest thing is I feel like these shows have done a lot of good. They really have. You know, they've really inspired people. They've uh, brought out about food addiction. They brought out about sad emotional situations that have really kind of caused people to turn to food. Um, and they've really inspired people. So for me, at least as a trainer, when I talk to people and often these shows come up, I usually say, you know, this is what I usually say. And then my question is more, would you add to this? I usually say, yes, you can glean a lot of inspiring information from these shows. You know, connect to it. Realize that it is a lot. It re is very emotional. Maybe write down emotionally what's stopping you or the, the problems or troubles you need to overcome so that you can really move on from your addiction, your feud addiction. And then the other thing I tell them is, hey, this is it, it's really unrealistic for the most part. I am, usually I do tell them extreme weight loss is a much better gauge because it is over a longer period of time. And because the trainers, I mean, because the clients at one point do go home and yeah, they have trainers, but so could anyone else at home. They're still living at home. They still have their jobs. They still have their family. But it's unrealistic to think that without all of that extra help and without all the cameras that you're going to maybe lose as much weight. Or a show's is the biggest loser. I know that I probably shouldn't say this on a live podcast, but I've heard that sometimes numbers were fudged. You know, they'd say, hey, this is the week weigh-in, and really it's like day 14 or 18, and they're saying it's their one week weigh-in. So what you see on television is not always as it appears. So that's what I tell my clients as far as these shows go. Is there anything that you would add to that? I mean, I think the thing um, about these weight loss shows, and I'll steal a story from my boss and mentor, J.D. Roth, who created the shows, is, you know, it's brought weight, uh, weight issues to the forefront. You know, 10 years ago, people weren't talking about obesity, even though, you know, um, stats weren't that much worse than they are today. I mean, people were, you know, one out of two people were, were obese. But, you know, when they first started trying to produce Biggest Loser, he, he tells the story of reaching out to a restaurant and they wanted to shoot a scene in a restaurant. And they couldn't find a, a single restaurant in the whole city of LA to shoot at. Um, nobody wanted anything to do with a show about fat people. And in season five, of The Biggest Loser, they're sitting down at the White House with Michelle Obama's personal chef. And that's what, you know, a show like Biggest Loser did for the conversation. It brought obesity to the forefront. And, and people started to realize that, you know, these are real people and these are real people who are hurting. And I think the other big thing that, you know, we as TV producers realized um, is that that there's emotional issues behind this. When we first partnered with the Anschutz Health and Wellness Center, we had the best doctors in the whole country uh, at obesity research and uh, you know weight loss issues. And they even said we didn't realize until you guys brought these people into us, you know how much of uh, weight loss is tied into the emotional. Um, and the psychological and, and it's really confronting those issues and how, you know, food is, is, a, is, is a tool to push down those feelings and, um, you know, those painful moments from people's past. And, um, you know, I, I think to that end, yeah, these weight loss shows are great. Um, do, are there unrealistic expectations? Um, yes. Uh, cause I don't think most people can give up their entire life to lose weight, um, for, 
you know, even one week. Um, and it, it, when you are, you've got the best trainers in the world, the best nutrition and health facility in the world. And, you know, are, can you, do you have that? No. And are you 250 pounds overweight? Probably not. You're probably more 20 to 30 pounds overweight. So, you know, losing 20 pounds in a week just isn't going to happen. But does, should that keep you from, you know, trying? I hope not. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. No, that's really powerful. And that's one thing, just to close up, you know, I, I, I learned from my fit to fat to fit journey was, you know, when I purposely gained 75 pounds in six months, I thought it was just going to be a physical transformation. Like I would get fat, I would get man boobs and a big gut. But the biggest thing I took away was this is so much more mental and emotional than I ever imagined. And that's why I couldn't connect with my clients is because I didn't understand that mental and emotional side until I did what I did. And so it definitely taught me a lot more of what people go through. I don't pretend to know exactly what it's like, but I can honestly say I have a better, better understanding versus before. And uh, that's one of the, you know, that's why I have no regrets of doing what I did because I can finally connect with people a lot better on that mental and emotional level. Um, having done what I did, there was just a recent article um, published in the LA times talking about how, um, the biggest thing people that are obese struggle with isn't the physical side, it's the mental and emotional side. Mm-hmm. And there's, there, unfortunately, there's no one size fits all diet or program for those people. Each person's case is individual and it's different for each person. It's not like, hey, you know, uh, cut back on calories and exercise more. I think everybody knows that. <laughs> it's, it's more so like, how do I make this a lifestyle? You know, it's like you said, it's unrealistic to expect everybody to drop everything they're doing and focus just on weight loss. There's so much more to life than uh, other than being skinny or having a six pack. There's so much more uh, purpose in life other than fitness. Um, and so that's why everyone doesn't make it a priority. Like, you know, you see the people in magazines and, and on social media, uh, but you know, making it somewhat of a priority. My hope is that people will understand this is about my health. This isn't just about you know, getting that number on the scale to go down. It's, you know, about my kids, my grandkids and living a healthy lifestyle. That was always our goal is to show not just the, the weight loss, but the effects of the weight loss. You know, it's what, what are these other things yeah. that you've improved in your life by losing the weight? Um, you know, the, the, the weight loss is kind of the cherry on top, but it's the relationships you've fixed and the job that you got back and whatever else, you know, came from it that we wanted to focus on with extreme weight loss. Yeah, man, I love it. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm so glad that you went through all of this. I, I really think that people can can really glean a lot from this conversation. Um, obviously, we also just like to hear it because we love the show and we love to watch it. But really, I wanted this focus to be on, you know, what this means for people that are trying to lose weight, some tips and things that they can learn and, and understand too. But now we're going into my favorite part of the show, and that's because <laughs> it's, it's the least important part of the show. Okay. It's where I ask you... It's called the lightning round. I'm going to ask you just a few random questions that have no rhyme or reason, and you have to answer them as quickly as possible, as fast as possible. (laughs) All right. All right. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Are we ready? (laughs) Hold on tight. Okay. (laughs) Funniest moment you've had either working or producing a show? Funniest moment I've had? Um, Yeah. uh, Probably something with Exhibit from Pimp My Ride. Um, (laughs) <laughs> he was just always funny. He was always on. Um, it was either that or on Beauty and the Geek when we did the first dates. Uh, we took all the geeks on their first dates, and it was awkward. And so, <laughs> really? Yeah. Was it awkward? Like they're like, I like to watch Star Trek. What do yeah, you like to yeah. Do? There was a lot of those kind of moments. Um, there was also <laughs> a moment where we actually did a dating scene for Extreme Weight Loss that's now coming to my mind where a guy, you know, he, he wanted to lose the weight so he could find a girlfriend. And um, he he went on his first speed dating and he just failed miserably. It just bombed. But <laughs> it was funny. He was the nicest guy. And he eventually got a girlfriend. But I, I remember. Okay. All right. He That's brushed good. up on this. I can only tease about that because I actually secretly love Star Trek, <laughs> live long and prosper. Not kidding. All right. Next question. What is the weirdest show that you've ever pitched to a network? Or heard of being pitched. Or heard pitched. of being pitched either. Uh, the weirdest show I ever wanted to pitch was called Small Claims Court, and I thought it would be funny to have like a little person as the judge, and he would rule oh on cases gosh. that were worth twenty dollars or less. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you really pitched that? 
<laughs> that is hilarious, Matt. That is so oh funny. Gosh. Why didn't that get picked up? Uh, I, can't I know. Yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> I mean, now that people are hearing this, yeah. they're like, let's really pitch this. It's for idea. It's like gold. Yeah, that I reached so out to my fun. agents at CAA if anybody wants to uh, buy that one. Small claims. Small okay. claims. Really, I think I called it really small claims court. <laughs> Gosh. That wow, is that awesome, is a, a really poor idea. I love it. Okay, <laughs> last and final question. What is either the funniest or the funnest or preferably most embarrassing moment or experience you've had with either Chris and or Heidi? Well, first season, we had a guy who was 550 pounds and had his 90-day weigh-in where he had weighed in at, I think, still about 450 pounds, decided that he, won- he he missed his goal by one pound, and he decided he if he weighed in naked, uh, it would, um, <laughs> it would, it w- it would, help, it would out. help out. And sure enough... His his gym shorts were a pound. That's how, how big. No. Like, his, oh my like, gosh. Eight, they must have been like eight XL gym shorts. But he took it oh off and gosh. he weighed in at 450 pounds, fully naked. <laughs> and you know, oh it was like gosh. I couldn't like begrudge him hitting his goal, so we let him do it. And then when you see it in the show, we actually just sort of futzed the um, the shot, so you don't. You can't tell that he's like. Well, yeah, bare, we actually had him way back in, and then we just um, like sort of futz the scale off by like one pound so that you didn't have oh to see the national <laughs> television but uh, yeah yeah and then after that that, they would start sending us because they would do their own weigh-ins each week um to give us uh weigh-in updates and we would make them videotape their weigh-ins and he started sending us all his weigh-ins naked so oh my gosh everybody on the production crew it's like, oh, <laughs> is like geez. awesome we got another one <laughs> Okay, last, seriously, last question. This has to do with my episode when I was on yeah. uh, with Chris, season three. Whose idea was it for him to eat Alyssa's diet for 24 hours? Was that his idea or was that your guy's idea? And uh, did he did he hate you afterwards <laughs> well, for about a day you know, or two? Drew, that was my idea and that's uh, – <laughs> That's uh, that was the show. That was the show that I was that, that you and I were gonna do. So uh, yeah, and yeah. I still hope someday we can do. Um, if you if you can stomach it, no pun intended. Oh, yeah. hey, we it. know that I can stomach it. Chris didn't last twenty four hours. Remember? Chris lasted about he, eight hours. And he was so <laughs> sensitive. Well, Chris is you know because Chris's diet is so strict. He's now gotten to the point where he can't like. There's so many things he can't eat, um, but. One secret about Chris is that he loves cheeseburgers. I've seen him eat. I've seen him take down some of the biggest, nastiest oh, yeah. cheeseburgers uh, that uh, you've ever seen. Yeah. But only on only on his cheat day. Yeah, right. and that's okay because Heidi already threw him under the oh, bus. Yeah. He, she said he has a sweet tooth, time. so he's used to he's used to that. But um, anyways, Matt, I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of our our uh, podcast and being on the show. We really appreciate having you on, and I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast and um and yeah so where can we send people to learn more about you or about the show is three ball productions a good place to send yep. them or yep okay three ball productions there is a uh, there's a you know the extreme weight loss facebook page uh has updates of what's going on and okay. awesome we'll make sure to put that in the show notes yeah we'll put everybody. that in the show notes and um we'll keep you guys posted if really small claim courts becomes ever a tv show <laughs> Successful reality show ever made. All right. Well, thanks so much, Matt. Right, thanks, we'll Matt. be in touch, man. Awesome. Take All right. care. We'll talk to you later. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. We really, really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let us know if you guys liked us having people like executive producers on the podcast from time to time instead of just health and fitness experts. Let us know your thoughts. Um, and don't yeah, forget- leave a comment. You guys, we read all of those comments. If there's specific people or topics you want us to discuss, make sure you leave us a review. Let us know because we will we review all of those and we determine based on that what we should do moving forward. Yeah, and don't forget to subscribe to the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast on iTunes and uh, stay in the know with uh, following us on our websites and our social media. My handle is at Fit to Fat to Fit, and mine is at Too Fit at Home. Yep, and my website is fittofattofit.com, and Lynn's is twofitathome.com. Uh, sign up for the newsletter so you guys know what's happening and to stay in touch with us. But we really, really appreciate you guys listening to today's episode, and we hope to have you back on and listening uh, next time. Have a good day. Bye.